developed by the South Korean KAI in collaboration with the US Lockheed Martin, the T-50 Golden Eagle is one of the most notable aircraft today. There are two important successes in its story. The first is the aircraft's own success and the second is the successful vision which is making the South Korea an actor in the world aviation industry. As a weapon detective, we're investigating the brilliant aviation adventure of this far eastern country and the Starboy T-50 of this adventure. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start. Indeed, with the T-50, South Korea has become one of the world players in the aviation industry. Yet, you should not overlook a detail. There is a big difference between playing in this league and being among the leaders of this league. Even so, if your goal is to become one of the league leaders, you must first be involved in the game. From this perspective, the T-50 became a sound entry ticket. The first Cold War was a bit warmer on the Korean Peninsula because the Korean War ended with a truce that did not bring true peace. Therefore, having a national defense industry was not an option but a necessity for the South Korea. However, reaching this goal was a real challenge for a country that was colonial for a long time and then experienced a devastating war. Nevertheless, Koreans, one of the most hardworking and disciplined nations of the Far East, managed to perform a miracle in a short time. Of course, the support of the USA was also important in this success. In a possible war, it was difficult to provide logistic support from the USA to this other end of the world. For this reason, Washington had adopted the policy of supporting industrialization of South Korea. In fact, South Korea's local aviation industry adventure is as old as the Buhelo, which made its first flight in 1953. As the first aircraft designed and manufactured in this country, it was used by the Republic of Korea Air Force until 1960s. Only one Buhelo was produced and South Korea had not taken a new step about this area for some time. Established in this country in 1977, Samsung Precision started to produce subsystems in aviation field in a short time. In 1987, the company called Samsung Aerospace Industries established a partnership with Daewoo Heavy Industries and Hyundai Space and Aircraft Company. This joint company started license production of BK-117 and BO-105 helicopters in late 1980s as well as the F-16s in the 1990s. In 1999, this joint company became Korea Aerospace Industries, shortly KAI, and gained a structure that became more independent of its founding partners. Having become one of the leading exporters of the world since the second half of the 1980s, South Korea knew the global economic game well. Seoul was aware that the way to have a strong and sustainable aviation industry was to develop products that can be sold to foreign markets. For this reason, KI avoided the policy of developing a fancy and glamorous aircraft that would compete with the US and European products. Instead of competing with the overwhelmingly powerful aviation industries of these countries, Koreans turned to the fields they left empty. As it will soon be seen, this was a very wise decision. South Korea had already been working to develop a local basic training aircraft that would replace the T-28 Trojans and T-6 Texans since the late 80s. This program, called KTX, had low risk for both development costs and technological challenge. It was the most feasible step towards owning the national aviation industry. In addition, this type of aircraft, which the major US and European aviation companies have not been interested in for a long time, would have a good chance of export. The KT-1, the product of the KTX program, perfectly met the demands of the Republic of Korea Air Force. Of course, the sales of the KT-1 were relatively low compared to its competitors worldwide. Yet, 
This can be accepted as a success for a country that has originally produced an aviation industry product for the first time. With the success of the KT-1, South Korea decided to continue the same approach. Since the early 1990s, a program called KTX-2 for development of a jet advanced training aircraft was being already carried out to replace the T-38 Talons of the Republic of Korea Air Force. In addition, South Korea has been planning to develop a jet aircraft as the replacement of its large number of A-37s and F-5s since early 1990s. As it is known, the A-37 is armed version of the T-37 training aircraft. The F-5s were developed based on the T-38. The new jet training aircraft would be the base model for the new combat aircraft to replace the A-37s and F-5s. This program had another advantage similar to the previous KTX program. At that time, the USA and many European countries were turning all their efforts toward a new generation combat aircraft. However, these aircraft were overpriced and overcapable. On the other hand, many countries were looking for more economical alternatives that could replace aircraft such as A-37 and F-5. In summary, the export chance of the South Korea's new jet plane was high. Also, the next logical step for KAI which previously developed a turboprop engine aircraft, was to design a relatively simple jet aircraft. Jumping directly in the fifth generation fighter race meant pushing resources and abilities very hard. KI was already having a hard time for financing of the KTX-2 program. For this reason, 70% of the financing of the development program was directly provided by the South Korean government. Technology transfer was also required for the solution of some technical problems. A partnership was established with the US Lockheed Martin to ensure the necessary technology transfer. This company also agreed to cover 13% of the program costs. South Korea had shown the wisdom to cooperate with the league's major players rather than making them rivals. It has also managed to use non-national resources to own an independent national aviation industry. Some engineers were transferred from Taiwan who previously conducted similar programs. In 2000, the new aircraft was formally named as the T-50 Golden Eagle. The name T-50 refers to the 50th anniversary of the founding of the Republic of Korea's Air Force. Its first flight took place on August 20, 2002. After a year, the aircraft became operational. The current operators of the aircraft are Indonesia, Iraq, the Philippines, the South Korea, and Thailand. The T-50 is 13.14 meters long and 4.94 meters high. Its wingspan is 9.45 meters. The wing area of the aircraft is 23.69 square meters. The empty weight of the T-50 is 6,450 kilograms and the maximum takeoff weight is 13,500 kilograms. The aircraft is equipped with 78.7 kN General Electric F404GE102 afterburning turbofan engine. Its maximum speed is Mach 1.5. The aircraft, which has a range of approximately 1,850 km with its internal fuel, can increase this distance to 2,590 km with external fuel tanks. The service ceiling of the T-50 is 16,764 meters. Like many advanced jet training aircraft, the Golden Eagle can be armed when necessary. However, the T-50 model is used without weapons. The TA-50 and FA-50 versions of the aircraft are armed. The TA-50 is leading fighter trainer and light attack model of the Golden Eagle. The aircraft replacing the A-37s of the Republic of Korea Air Force 
had been originally considered to be named as A50. Then it was decided on the name of TA-50. After it was seen that the performance of the US APG-67 V-4 radar, which is planned to be integrated into the aircraft, was inadequate, the negotiations have been started with Israel to produce a version of the ELM-2032 radar, modified according to the local needs under license. Due to the heavy progress of this agreement, which also includes technology transfer, development of a domestic active electronically scanned array radar is on the agenda. Unlike the T-50, the TA-50 has a 20mm 3-barrel gun and the 4,500kg weapon capacity. The aircraft can carry the AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air and the AGM-65 Maverick air-to-surface missiles as well as smart and dumb bombs. In addition, this model is equipped with radar warning receiver and chaff flare dispensers. The TFA-50 is the model designed to replace the F-5s of the Republic of Korea Air Force. Compared to the TA-50, the aircraft, whose wings are strengthened, can thus be equipped with the heavy air-to-surface missiles such as the Taurus. Integration works of this missile is still ongoing. As we mentioned earlier, there are some difficulties in producing a version of the ELM-2032 radar modified according to the local needs under license and South Korea is considering working on a local development program on a new radar. Once the issue is resolved, the FA-50 will have the ability to fire long-range air-to-air missiles such as the AIM-120, AMRAAM and Meteor. It is also planned to equip this model with an advanced targeting pod. In 2014, NFA-50 conducted an AGM-65 Maverick test fire and successfully hit a retired ship. The T-50B is the version used by the Black Eagles aerobatic team of the Republic of Korea Air Force. Different from the T-50, this model is equipped with a smoke generator at the wingtips and five cameras. The T-50I model, which was preferred by Indonesia to replace the Hawk MK-53 and OV-10 Broncos in 2011, also has light attack capabilities. Equipped with a radar warning receiver, this version has capabilities similar to the FA-50 but doesn't have the 20mm gun. A total of 16 aircraft were delivered to the Indonesian Air Force in 2013 and 2014. The Philippines ordered 12 FA-50s for use in light attack and lead in fighter trainer missions in 2012. This model is defined as the FA-50PH. The Philippines Air Force is considering three or four of these aircraft to be fitted with capability for beyond visual range intercept. It is also mentioned in various international institutions and press that Philippines plans to purchase 12 additional FA-50s. In 2013, the Iraqi Air Force ordered 24 FA-50s. These aircraft, identified as the T-50IQ, were delivered between 2016 and 2017. This order from Iraq is the biggest export success of the KAI to date. With the order of four aircraft in 2015, the Royal Thai Air Force became the last member of the Golden Eagle Club. This model is identified as a T-50TH. Despite these achievements and having the Lockheed Martin as the partner of Golden Eagle program, the T-50 did not win the tender of the US Air Force. Although there are reports that the Iraqi Air Force has used the T-50 IQs in various combat missions as the weapon detective we have not yet reached an official confirmation. However, it is known that the Philippine Air Force has used its Golden Eagles in important conflicts. On January 26, 2017, two FA-50PHs conducted a nighttime attack on terrorist facilities in Budik in Mindanao. In the same year, Philippine Air Force conducted some airstrikes with these aircraft against MAD terrorists in Marawi. An unfortunate incident took place in these airstrikes. 
and FH-50PH hit Philippine soldiers as a result of friendly fire. On February 2, 2019, two FA-50PHs dropped eight 250-pound bombs on the ISIS-linked Bank Samora Islamic Freedom Fighters facility. Today, the T-50 is running a tough race on the world market with the L-15, L-159, M-346, T-7 and Yak-130. However, only the L-15 and T-7 can compete with the Golden Eagle with their ability to fly at supersonic speeds. The T-50 is also being evaluated by many countries such as Azerbaijan, Spain and the United Arab Emirates in leading fighter trainer programs. But more importantly, the Golden Eagle is looking for a market as a combat aircraft in Argentina and Croatia. These countries do not need excessively capable fighters like F-35, Eurofighter Typhoon or Rafale. In addition, they do not have enough money for these extremely expensive aircraft. Having an FA-50 can be a good start for a country like Brunei that does not have a combat aircraft in its inventory. Malaysia and Vietnam, which use multi-talented aircraft such as the Su-30, are also interested in the modest and low-priced FA-50s. All these developments show us how South Korea has the right strategy for owning the national aviation industry and competing worldwide in this field. Please remember, when we mention about military systems, to export to a country does not mean a single sale. The country that bought a product from you could become your traditional market in a short time. In the following years, we may witness South Korea achieving similar success in the ongoing KFX New Generation Fighter Development Program. Indonesia has already become a partner of this program. The story of the T-50 Golden Eagle doesn't just tell us about a successful aircraft. It also shows how to become a successful world player in the aviation industry by using the right strategies. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel.